I'm gonna spin around and let you see what I'm trying to do today. I'm gonna try and pump this pond down. You can see the water is over the berm behind me over my, over this shoulder right here. And I'm gonna swing around and you'll see it is full. It is as full as it can be. It's not over the road, but it was over the road. So I've got to get that thing pumped down if I'm going to have any chance of keeping construction going on the projects that we have up here. Okay, this is what we got. This will be the right side of my driveway. There should not really be any water here at all. That's a couple feet deep. So as you saw in the intro, I got the pumps loaded up. I've got two pumps. Got a brand new seven horsepower pump that I just received. And I have the pump that I repaired, the Honda four horsepower pump case the seven horsepower doesn't work or shuts down it's always good to have a backup as they say in the navy seals two is one one is none so i do like the look of the pond when it's that full if i lived on the property full time i probably wouldn't be worried about pumping it down but i can only come out here on the weekends i got a 40 hour a week job with the navy and i just i just can't be out here on a moment's notice pumping it down you know, if we were to get a big rain event. Okay, I'm ready to start un unrolling this hose. It's 250 feet. I don't know how much I needed. I did a Google Earth uh, measurement. I think 250 should be fine. So this should be fun unrolling that across that pasture. Oh man, I didn't think that would be easy, and I was right. I unrolled the hose, but then the inner part of the hose came out. Now I have to untwist all that. I think the solution, catch my breath here, I think the solution is cut that hose in half and have like a 100 footer and a 150 footer. That ain't happening today. There's a deer bed right there. There's a deer bed right there, and there's a deer bed right there. Pretty cool. So I untwisted all this pipe down here, and I found that I had a whole bunch more hose than I needed, because I just got to go through this small section of pine trees. That's where the low area is that I want to pump the water to. So in the Air Force, we say flexibility is the key to air power. So earlier I mentioned that I wasn't gonna cut this hose, but now that I see how much hose I have, I don't need a 250 foot hose. So I'm gonna cut it, just make it easier to manage. I've got the ends that I can always connect them back together. So I'm gonna finish rolling out this hose and see what length I need. Surprise. So remember when I said I was gonna cut the hose because it was probably too long for what I needed. The hose is the perfect length. It actually goes right to the low spot where I'm trying to pump the water. This low spot I'll show once I get the water pumping. It's gonna be one of the places we put a lot of fill dirt from the pond to make it a walking path. But right now, it's more of a wading path. I'm out of breath, too old for this. Let's see how quickly this pump starts. Brand new, I put Mobile One oil in it yesterday about three quarters of a quart so should just choke it and go we'll see
surprised when she caught her prime. She started up, first pull though, brand new, out of the box. Turn this camera around, I'll show you what I did with that state. Okay, I'm just running her at about idle. Brand new motor, breaking it in. I don't want to run it wide open. We'll go at the other end of the line and see how much water's coming. Yeah, so hopefully Deb edits out me getting drenched, but I'm sure she'll laugh when she sees it, and that'll be, if anything makes this video, that will make this video. Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed with that pump so far, the way it started, idling smooth. The water should be coming out of there. I see it, I see the end of the pipe, but I just wanted to pan around here so this low area that I'm standing on and then I'm pointing the camera on you can see the water there and there's our fence line we had a lot of dirt from the pond put here but you can see it's wet up here and uh, we you know we filled in the very low area we didn't know how much we needed to fill and we needed the fill for the house more than we needed it for back here. But uh, right now, this is not a dry walking path for Deb. It's like a great place for snakes. And you see the water bubbling up there. This is, uh, this is our east fence line. Hours and hours of clearing this. Got high grass growing, or by her. You see the water trickling right there. Kind of set this up so it wouldn't wash out anything. You bought the plants you're supposed to use with your toes. You can see that it leaks down to the plant Okay, it's been an hour. Came down here to check on the pump. I just put her down the idle. Popped off the gas cap. Let me show you what we got here. Let's first let's look at the water level. right up to the top of the filler neck. You see all the love bugs go by. I mean, it's ridiculous. They're just, I think they're attracted to the pump noise or maybe the uh, exhaust from the pump, but there's probably 300 around me. Okay, it's 12.30. Been pumping about two hours. You can see the stick is almost all the way out of the water. So I'd say about an inch. But every time it goes down an inch, because of the size of the pond, there's less water to pump. So two hours got it down a solid inch. I think that's pretty good. I mean, I can look across the pond. I can see where the water was. So it works, just works slow. Check the gas burn at least half a tank. So I think everything's as I expected. I'm gonna fuel her up and then get back to mowing. So we're just over three hours of pumping. And you can see the stick is definitely out of the water. We get down here to stick level. So I'd say we drop like you can see the water lap line, that's what I call it. You see that little shelf of sand? So we've dropped the pond that far in two and a half hours. I don't even think we burned two gallons of gas. And I'm gonna stress this on my channel. 
non-ethanol gas only in small engines if you want them to last. Okay, before I crank this thing back up or take it off idle, I'm going to capture all these love bugs. I guess the love bugs are attracted to either the heat or the exhaust of the pump. And they're swarming around it, but I guess they touch the exhaust and they get burnt or uh, the fumes kill them. But yeah, there's just carnage everywhere around that pump. All sorts, you know, I mean, probably a thousand dead love bugs. But uh, they probably died happy, right? That water coming in there. Up the 250 feet of two inch hose comes down here to the low area. You can see I've moved a lot of water to this area. It's covering, it's covering my road. But it'll soak in. It's better here where it doesn't hurt anything than the pond where keeping uh, mosquitoes back here in the pond where it's making the road mushy. Wood ducks might come back here. Okay, we've been pumping about six hours and uh, pump's running great. As you can see behind me, the stick is dry. It's showing a couple of inches lower on the stick, but their big story is behind me in the woods where the overflow was. I think this pump in six hours could bring this pond down quite a bit more than two inches, but it's pulling from the pasture and also from those woods. So I'll turn this camera around and show you what I mean. I knew there was water here. I knew it was laying here and I knew it was the overflow. But what I didn't realize, and it's, it's almost dry now, is how much that was. So bringing the pond down an inch, a lot of deer tracks right here, meant sucking all this water that's up here in this grass that's a foot deep. It's all coming into the pond and refilling the pond. This is fawn tracks. We got a, we got a fawn on the property. I mean, little itty bitty tracks right there see them how tiny they are you gotta fall in that's cool you can see where the water is pulled away from this bank where the bank was wet and it was wet here now the water is way down there so all that water comes off that hill and the trees are drying a little bit but you can see at the base of the pine trees how wet they are that's how far the water's come down so when you bring the pond down an inch, you got to bring all of this down an inch. So once all of this is down, then the pond will come down a lot quicker. So all that I brought down with the pump. I mean, this was solid water that I'm walking across here and, and it's wet clay. But all this has been brought down. Pretty impressive for that little pump. There's no water even close to the road now. Okay, it's 5.30. She's been running straight since 10.30. Actually, I came up to her and she was cut off. She had run out of gas when I had gone to the back. Oh, I almost fell in the pond. Gone to the back to mow. But easily four to five inches inside the pond is down. And like I said earlier, that counts all the overflow area it had to pull from. So if it was just the pond itself, I think I easily could have brought it down a foot to two feet if I was just pulling the pond down and not all the overflow. But hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please smash that like button. Please click subscribe and we'll catch you all in the next 